with Graham Fletcher. One of the many criticisms levelled at Mercedes-Benz is that the majority of their cars look rather frumpy. Well, not this new C280. The thing that I particularly like is the treatment of the rear light clusters and the way that they double as the end cap for the rear fenders. It gives the car a younger, livelier appearance. Okay, so back in 1994, Graham thought Mercedes vehicles, including this first-generation C-Class, looked a little frumpy. Well, looking back, most cars kind of look that way, I guess. But when it came to the C-Class, Graham was actually impressed with some of the luxury. On the upside, however, we've got a really neat button that folds down the rear headrests and for the first time ever in a Mercedes-Benz, a real live coffee cup holder. Wow, impressive, a real cup holder in a Mercedes. Well, that was 20 years ago. Today, the C-Class has become the bread and butter vehicle for this company. And who knows more about bread and butter than the French? And this week, we find ourselves in Provence, France. So it seems only fitting then that they have chosen this location to launch the 2015 C-Class. So let's check this new vehicle out and also discover if they've added any more cup holders. The C-Class has always been a really important part of our overall lineup. It's now in its fifth generation and in Canada, um, the last generation, we were selling close to 10,000 units per year. So it's an extremely important product in the overall scheme of things. One of the things that they've done really well is uh, democratically made a lot of features that normally you'd have to spend more money for on an E-Class or an S-Class available. So from a safety standpoint, from a fit and finish, from a convenience and luxury features, almost everything that you can get on the much larger S-Class is now available on this compact sedan. Over the past year or so, along with adding the CLA, Mercedes has been refreshing its lineup, including the S-Class. And you know, you look at this new C-Class, you definitely see the S-Class in it. In fact, this new C-Class is bigger, more room inside, and more trunk space. So you could say that the lines between the S and the C are blurring just a little bit, but maybe that's by design. We wanted to carry some design elements from the S-Class, um, but also the car is, yeah, by the proportion and the, and the, yeah, the, the different dip dimension, it's a car of its own. Yeah. It, it's a bit more crispy, it's a bit more sporty, it looks a little bit younger than the S-Class. It's the trend these days, but this C-Class, like the S-Class, can practically drive itself, which is why they call it an intelligent car with intelligent drive. It is loaded with active safety, such as blind spot monitoring, active parking, collision prevention, and the list goes on. All great stuff, but take my advice, don't close your eyes and rely on it. But it is the future, and I can buy that. But what I continue to resist is another trend called connectivity. Staying connected in this new C-Class, like this big brother, is loaded with this kind of technology. You can connect with the world like you can with your iPhone or any computer. But while that C-Class that Graham was driving 20 years ago was a long way from this baby, I would suggest that at least back then it was all about the driving. Sorry, but for me, while I appreciate satellite radio and a good Navi system, which this car has, for me it's all about the drive and a rare opportunity to be unconnected to everything and everybody but my car. On a positive note, I really like the interior and the dash and the instruments. Everything is easy to use. Now, I do have a pet peeve. This car does not come, not even as an option, with a heated steering wheel. We're talking Canada here. Now, we do have heated front seats, not back seats, but no ventilated seats. I mean, a $20,000 Kia Forte has all of that and much more. One more is the screen. I like this screen, easy to read, but it looks like an afterthought. Looks like they showed the boss and the boss said, where's the screen? We knew we forgot something, and they stuck it there. Again, it looks good, but I think like some of its competitors, this should disappear into the dash. This is a huge evolution in terms of passive safety, active safety, driving dynamics, the new suspension, um, the opportunity to select um, the agility of the vehicle. So we feel that we've got a lot to offer.
So is the new C-Class the best one yet? Will it continue to be the bread and butter vehicle for this company? I think the simple answer is yes. They've done a nice job with this car. My only disappointment, we didn't get to drive it on the Autobahn. And of course, we have a diesel coming in the near future and further down the road, the possibility of a plug-in electric, if that's your thing. But you know, the bottom line with this car, it feels and looks like a baby S-Class. And is that something to complain about? I don't think so. Oh, I almost forgot. It debuted in 1994 with one cup holder. We're now up to six. So there you go.